I'm joined now by Robert Moran. He is a partner at the Brunswick Group Consulting Firm. So um, again, positive, constructive, and fruitful. That's the latest from the Chinese side just within the last hour. Your thoughts on how uh, things have sort of shaped out through the day and, and into what could be a deal? Well, several thoughts. I think the first one is no one, I don't think anyone actually wants a trade war. I heard Secretary Ross speak a little bit at the National Press Club earlier this week, and he sounded like a man that didn't need a deal. But we know that 68% of Americans in recent polling say they think a trade war would be bad. Um, and we know that the nation is even split about whether they would support or oppose tariffs in the future if they raised prices. So I do think that nation states are rational actors and they step back from the brink and they do what's in their best interest, which is not a trade war. So where do we go from here? It sounds like both sides are edging towards each other. They both need some kind of wins to take back to their political bases, I think. Um, but the language from the Trump administration actually sounds like, a, if, if not a deal, a framework is in the works. And I'm not sure they have to have a deal tomorrow before people fly back. As long as there's a beginning of a framework and people feel like they're getting closer, I think that's probably good enough. Right. It sounds like, I mean, the U.S. side is coming out uh, with a lot of the information, like throwing out numbers, this sort of thing. Chinese side, uh, Wall Street Journal reporting tonight that China doesn't want to commit to uh, any specific numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned that you don't think uh, there has to be a deal by the end of the weekend, but it seems there are some deadlines coming up. Is there more pressure to have a, some concrete agreements? Because it's not just the U.S. demanding and saying we want all this. I mean, China has to get something out of it as well. Exactly. I mean, look, I keep coming back to the fact that in the long run, nation states are rational actors trying to work in their best interest. It is not in either nation's interest to go into a trade war. We just become poorer as a result, both of us. Um, it sounds very good. It sounds very optimistic what's happening. It sounds like they're closing the gap. There's still some very large things on the table. You know, uh, I was just, you know, we were just hearing about non tariff trade barriers, for example, intellectual property. So that sounds like it's a big um, sticking point with the Trump administration. But it sounds like they're trying to get at least some wins that they can take back um, and de escalate. And I think what's happening with ZTE is interesting, too. It seems like, and this, and Sorghum, I don't know if these are all tit for tat or not, but it does seem like there's sort of a de-escalation um, on both sides. Right. Um, if there is not a deal, what do you think will happen then? I mean, it, a lot of complicated things need to be worked through, but what are you hearing here in Washington from the business community? Well, I don't, generally speaking, it is, a trade war is not helpful for the U.S. business community uh, writ large. And um, there's a lot of pressure being applied in different places uh, in Washington right now in terms of trying to de-escalate and find some common ground and find um, a way that each side can walk away with feeling like something was good happened to them. Um, I think at the end of the day, even if there is not a deal, there will be enough things that are in play that both sides can say it was okay. I mean, listening to Secretary Ross at the press club earlier this week sort of step away from the ZTE issue was very interesting. And um, I just have a sense that both sides are trying to find a way to, to de-escalate. With all that said, I do worry that you could get a feedback loop going into these midterm elections in which Republican politicians, knowing that economic nationalism could help them, could end up sort of being in a feedback loop that reinforces them going to an economically populist place, and that makes it harder to come to any basic agreements. So we'll see. We'll see how much Trump backers support whatever framework comes out of this and the level of economic populism, economic nationalism in the United States in key states. All right, Robert Moran, we'll see uh, what the weekend holds. Appreciate your insight. Thank you so much.